kid. And you're a no good rat. I'm sorry, Jesse. That's expensive talk, baby. It'll cost you 200 more to keep your pretty nose out of my collar. Couldn't you cut it down, say, a hundred? Well... Were you looking for this? No, this is dangerous. Two hundred more in the usual place. What do you mean it's a good thing I'm here? I thought you were trailing me. Don't try it. And uh, the payoff is up to me. You'll pay it, Marty. You'll be smeared all over my column and the front pages. I'll uh, collect tomorrow at the usual place. Goodbye, sucker. Don't let him worry you, Marty. He's the one that needs to worry right now. Take it easy, honey. I am. That's why I'm going out again. Look, if anyone wants me, I'm up here in conference. When I get back, I uh, probably will be. 5,000 across the board on Mimi Jill in the 7th Caliente. I'm repeating a bit, sir. 5,000 to place, 5,000 to win, 5,000 to show. A total of 15,000. And this is Jack calling in from Jack's place. Just a minute, please. Oh, May. This bet's for 15 grand from Jack's. Hello, Jack. I'll take this bet. But listen, wise guy, no more of your last minute bets. I got hooked for three grand yesterday and couldn't lay any of it off. So remember this, and no more smart moves, because I don't like it. Hi, Hanson. Where's the boy? You know. Use a jukebox. Side of the street and uh, 200 across the board. What horse race and track, please? Forget the ponies. I want to talk to the boss. Oh, the boss. Uh, just a second. Miss Bishop. Hello? I'll be right there. Get your coat. I may have a job for you. Okay, May. Play my hand with it, George. Good evening, Miss B. 
treasure. Everything comes out from under the rocks when it rains. Very funny. Well, what do you want now? I uh, just dropped in to tell you that we've up the pay off 300. 300? Are you... All right, now get out of here. Okay. But don't forget the extra cash. Aren't you afraid I might give you more than you expect? <laughs> you know, you're a cute kid. I could go for you. I think you should. I'm paying you enough. Well, business and uh, pleasure won't mix right now, but uh, maybe later. Hmm? How much, Robert? Anything new, Edie? No, Jeff. I've typed most of the columns. I'll finish it up. Brad been asking for my stuff? Not tonight, for a change. He seems to have something else on his mind. Uh-oh. I, uh, better get into the office before Brad sees me. You still there? My briefcase, Edie. Did you put it away? In the safe at your place. I dropped it on my way here tonight. Swell. Oh, uh, Lamont Cranston's getting married tomorrow. Got anything on that? I'll call him in a minute. Now, you're a cute kid, Edie. I could go for you. You'd better. I like the way you say that. Yeah? Yeah, that's right. Two hundred more. Mm, usual price. I better get the column finished. Get Cranston on the phone for me. Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Here I am, Shrubby. Are you a ventriloquist? I guess we got separated by the crowd. What crowd? Uh, another slug lady. Shrubby, watch your manners. What he means, ma'am, is you name your poison and he'll be glad to give it to you. You can't get around me with that sort of talk. No. Yes, I see what you mean. Yes. You see what you need. Shot a champagne, Inspector? Yeah. So Cranston's going to marry Margot tomorrow. That means that your nephew won't be able to barge into police affairs anymore. When he doesn't, you're going to miss him, Inspector. Just like I miss my mother-in-law. She was as nosy and noisy as Cran... Nice party, Miss Lane. Lovely party, Margot. Thank you, Uncle. I'm practicing because tomorrow you'll be related to me by marriage. Maybe you know what you're doing, but if I were you, I'd rather stand trial for murder than for matrimony with Lamont Cranston. Well, Lamont likes you, too. As a matter of fact, everything looks so wonderful tonight that even you look good to me. Yes, right away. Wedding bells. I can hear them already. Me too. Hey, 
may hear bells. It's the telephone. Well, you're always taking romance out of life. Mr. Cranston's apartment. Mr. Cranston, I'll get him. I'm not going to get him. He ain't even here. He's not here. Well, where is he? Well, he's been gone a half an hour. I've been so excited I haven't even noticed. Me too. But he's got to be here. These people are his guests. Uh, Mr. Cranston will have to call you back, sir. Yes, sir. I'll tell him. That was Jeff Mann of the Daily Bulletin. Jeff Mann. Now I suppose he'll have it in his column that Lamont was absent from his own wedding eve party. Oh, wait till I get my hand on Mr. Cranston. Then you, Shreddy, find him. Don't talk so much. Find him. Not yet, but soon. Same old routine. That Jeff gets away hey, with murder. You see that shadow? Shadow? Hey, it is the shadow! <laughs> Come on, the shadow! Step off! Shadow! I think he's dead. The shadow must have gone out this way, but there's no one out there. Oh, brother, where's the police? Gangway, anyway, keep away. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mr. Thomas, Jeff Mann was just killed by the shadow. What? Here, take that down and call the police. Yes, sir. You cover the story and get our cameraman up here before the police arrive. All right, folks, break it up, break it up. Send the camera up the newsroom right away. So Margaret's burning slightly, huh? Not slightly, boss. She's burning like a four-alarm fire, and you know what that means. Ready? Uh-oh. Get the first aid kit ready. Well, is he back yet? Well, you see, uh, I mean, you can't see, can you? See what? Shreddy, are you beginning to see things? Yes, I, I mean, no, I'm not. It, it was right there. Susan, it's so nice seeing you again. Now it's back in again. It's always nice seeing you, Lamont. This is a lovely party, isn't it? <laughs> How would you know? Oh, uh, you remember Susan, don't you? Where have you been? Yes, uh, yes, where have you been, Susan? Uh, didn't you two go to school together? Yes, private school, and she can go right back there. Uh, I mean, this is a private affair. Well, it was very nice seeing you, Susan. Go on back and have some fun, dear. I'll take you back, Susan. Were you in on this with him? Well, all I know is the boss said he was going out and slugged up. Does he see a guy? I should have stayed here and slugged you. Lamont, you went out of the shadows. Shh. Idiot. This is supposed to be a private affair. I, I mean a secret. A secret. Lamont, did you really slug a man tonight? Seeing tomorrow is our wedding day, darling, I figured this was my last chance. Well, it was. Did you slug a good boss? Yeah, of course I did, Shrevy. There will be no more coat and dagger stuff for either one of you. And you, Lamont, are going to stop being the shadow. Shh. You are going to stop dressing up and playing little boy boo. From now on, after we're married, you can sit around the house all day long in bedroom slippers. <laughs> What are you supposed to do with girls like that? The only way to fight a lady is with your hat. Grab it and run. She chased me. Hello? Goodbye. Police. It's a nice party. The police. What if we are police? Well, not you. I'm surrounded. I mean him. Trevi's saying things again. <laughs> Inspector, I dropped by to pick you up. Jeff Mann has just been murdered at the Daily Bulletin. Nixon is already over there with the homicide squad. Witnesses who saw the killer say it was a shadow. The shadow? The shadow? Not the shadow. See you folks later. Well, later I'm going with you. No, you're not dear. You're well, staying uh, here. Very good, Miss Lane. What the police force needs is fewer people telling us what the police force needs. And Cranston and Hitler. Hitler. We need you. Now look, Margaret, you know I've got... Boss, you killed him.
Come here, boss. Didn't you hear the police say that the shadow killed Jeff? Oh, they did say that, didn't they? Lamont, you didn't... What do you think? Somebody must be posing as me. Now get your coat and let's go. Lamont, you said that you went out to plug someone tonight. Yes, but it wasn't Jeff Mann. Now, come on, baby. But our guests, we can't... They're not as important as this. Not as important? If you leave this house, I'll, I'll never speak to you again. Donna, you talk like you have a hole in your head. A hole in my head? Well, now I do mean it. No, you don't. I'll see you in the morning at the wedding. Wait for me, boss. Hey, where do you think you're going, Superman? Guess I'll stay. Guess I'll go! He won't see me at our wedding. That won't come off. Because there won't be any. So there. Oh, don't cry, Miss Margot. No man is worth it. Me cry? <laughs> What's there to cry about? Nothing at all. <laughs> Excuse me, but what happened to the mom? Keep the same story on the front page. Keep it alive, keep it... Hello, Thomas. Did the police get anyone yet? Not yet, Grant. Uh, what do you think? I don't think. I know. Jeff was always exposing rackets and making enemies. He was killed by the man he meant to expose tomorrow, the shadow. Duh, duh, duh. Thanks, Thomas. Lamont. Hello, Edith. Jeff tried to call you. He did? Hmm. I'll talk to you later. Inspector. I sure caught something. Who'd you catch, the murderer? I must have caught the flu. My eyes are watering. Honest, Inspector, I feel all run down. Well, run down into the alley and see if the boys have found anything. It's wet out here. I'd probably catch double pneumonia single-handed. Dixon, get going. I wish I brought my rubbers. So the body was found lying on its back. Are you sure that's the way he was found, Inspector? Yes, he was struck from behind while he was sitting in this chair. Well, anyway, you won't be here to pester me. You are here. Get out! I'm gone. The last paragraph of the motive for murder. Give me that paper. Cranston, I told you. Yes, I know, Inspector. Then why don't you get out? Well, because Jeff Mann and I were pals, and I haven't seen him for a long time. And I don't want to see you. My nervous system is nervous enough without your hanging around. Inspector, Lamont is right here. I know it. That's why. Then why fellow as if he's three blocks away? Inspector, the shadow got two people. They just found Officer Daniels in the alley dead. And I feel worse, too. <laughs> A hundred dollar suit. I'll come down through the building. Get out of the way. Oh, Commissioner. All the resources of the bulletin are at your disposal. The shadow must be caught. Now, changing your tune, eh? Yes, you've written editorials praising the shadow. Yes, saying he was a Robin Hood character. That's what I thought until tonight. Jeff Mann was... Jeff Mann was only one of the shadow's victims. We just found another one in the alley. Another one? Ralph, get a photographer down the alley right away. Joe, hold the front page set up until I call you. Uh, Edith, did you ever hear Jeff say anything that might give us a lead? Well, he's been, I mean, nervous lately. Oh, did he say anything? Only that he was being followed every night by the shadow. The shadow? Well, no. Well, the events of tonight have confused me. He didn't say the shadow, he said a shadow. Mm. Well, maybe we can check back in Jeff's files. That's another way he's been acting strangely. He's been keeping his own files. No, there's nothing in the files. There hasn't been for over two months. I'm not feeling very well. Oh, uh, why don't you go on home? That's a good idea. And, uh, I'll call you later. I'd love for you to call me, Lamont. That don't sound like wedding bells to me, boss. Oh, boss! Boss, you all right? You need an aspirin, so I get an ambulance. Oh, oh, what happened? What happened is just as I did. Jeff Mann was hit from behind. He should have fallen on his face. Boss, are you dizzy? Oh, something's wrong. Tell Shrevy, what can I do for you? Oh, you're all right. Take a load, too, Shrevy. Take a load. Oh, 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 I 
get it? The paper shortage is back again, huh? It's the shortage of clothes that's bothering me. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. Hey, boss, we're gonna have another party, huh? Yeah, we're gonna have a party, all right. As soon as I get that rat who's impersonating me. Oh. Morty Green, Paradise Club, May Bishop Winter Garden. And Joe at Joe's Cafe and Sam at Sam's Cafe. Well, that's learn what Jeff Man had these telephone numbers. Hey, boss, your marriage license. This is your wedding day. I wonder. Well, let's find out. Give me 610, please. Oh, here, here, you talk. Say that I want to speak to Margo. Hiya, Jenny. The boss wants to... Why, you two tiny tin horns. Get off the line before I wrap it around your neck. I'm not speaking to you, so don't you try to speak to me. This is a private telephone. I find it means keep... Jenny sounds very distant. Distant? Well, she just works upstairs for Miss Margo. You'll learn, Shrevy. What a wedding day. Hey, boss, you know that rice I bought? Yeah. Instead of throwing it, I can cook it. Sit here, Shrevy. Sure. Now, I want to prove that Jeff Mann should have fallen on his face and not on his back. Now, you fall when I come up behind you and hit you on the head. Oh, now, boss, look, 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 we're pals. You remember the now, time we... Now, Shrevy, you didn't think I'd hit you. I'll fake the blow. Oh. Now, sit right there. heard a bit. You're supposed to fall as if you'd been hit. Oh, oh, I get it. All right, try it again, boss. Yes, Jenny, you must apologize to Shrevy for talking that way to him over the telephone. But you said it doesn't make any difference. After all, you were not polite. You mean, after all, this is your wedding day. Match. I mean, naturally. So I must give Lamont a chance to use our, I mean, his wedding license. <gasps> well, this is a surprise. Oh, you killed him! Just as I thought, Lamont, you're running around in the shadow would turn you into a brute. Relax, baby, I was just experimenting. Experimenting on how to kill people? <laughs> All right, Shrevy, get up and explain. Shrevy, stop the acting and get up. Oh, Shrevy. <laughs> he is out cold. Oh! Even colder than usual! That's it. That's it! Killing people, experimenting on them, knocking poor Shrevy out! Well, of course, and Jenny Twelve for screaming so loud. Oh! He's blaming us for what he did! It's just like a oh, man! Oh, now, look here, Margo. Don't you dare shoot me. Now that I know your true character, I'll never marry you. <sighs> and neither will I. And you, too. Well, come on, boss. Let's do it. You already did it, Shrevy. Perfectly. I did? Was I good? <sighs> Marvelous. Now, look, while I'm gone, look up some of those taxi driver pals of yours and see if Marty Green or May Bishop are involved in some kind of a racket. Hey, boss, who laid this egg on my noggin? Hmm? Oh, uh, Jenny was here. Uh-oh, that explains it. This is a fine muddle. You told all the newspapers that Jeff Mann and Officer Daniels were murdered. Now, the medical examiner says both men died of heart failure. Well, what are we going to do? We? You're in charge of this case, Inspector. Entirely. He's in again. Everything happens to me. What are you doing here? Well, I just came from the morgue. That's no place to spend a honeymoon. Yeah, well, my honeymoon is deader than anything they have in there. Well, I'll explain that later. I got this in Jeff Mann's office. Being a columnist, he was a good typist. 
Uh, Jeff wrote this first paragraph. Notice the even pressure on all of the letters. I did this one. Notice the uneven pressure. All right, so what? Where's the piece of paper we got our Jeff's typewriter? All right. Now, right here, we recognize Jeff's typing. But down here... Lamont's right. Someone else wrote that lower paragraph. Yes, but who? The person who killed Jeff Mann and the policeman then tried to pin both murders on the shadow. Your nephew, the boy Blunder, is playing detective again. Those men were not murdered. Oh, but they were, Inspector. And the killer left his mark on both bodies. They're there, but it's hard to find unless you know what to look for. Cranston, Inspector! All right. Tell us your theory, and I'll bust it like a bubble. That's it. A bubble is nothing but air, and you... Cranston, I'm uh, telling you... <laughs> that you've got something. Yes, sir, my boy. Will you excuse us while we talk this over, Commissioner? Of course, gladly. You know, Lamont, I've been sick. I thought you'd get what I was driving at, the air bubble routine. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Folks, giving me the needle, babbling about bubbles, eh? Well, that's exactly how the murders were. Quiet. Every time I open my mouth, you put your foot in it. I got you out here to tell you that if I had my way, I'd lock you in jail, throw away the key, and watch you turn green. But, Inspector... And I'd see that you had a new suit of snappy bandages every day. Don't you have social sinus from fucking your nose in other people's business? I'm just trying to help you find the murderer. Find the murderer? Ah, oh, you couldn't find your hand in your own pocket. You come around here again, so help me. So help me. I think you've got something. Hello, Commissioner. Nice to see you boys working on a friendly basis. Oh, yes. We're pals, aren't we, Inspector? <laughs> <laughs> nice boy. Right in, Miss Merrill. A bridegroom isn't important, but you uh, can't have a wedding without one, so I've come down to let them out apologize. Miss Margot, let me come down so you can apologize too, Shreddy. So you get them out and we'll... Wait a minute. You said come in, Miss Merrill. Were you expecting a woman? Oh, no. Good-looking girl. To see Lamont? Oh, uh, no. To, uh, to see me. To see who? You're right. To see the boss. Where's Lamont? Oh, now, please. Unhandy, Shreddy. Now, listen, Jenny, you can't... Unhand me, Shreddy. She talk, Grant. I'm learning how to do it, too. What's about the murders? The boss is dying to see this girl. He'll die when I see him. But look, Edith telephoned. Say, hey, how come you call her Edith? Oh, Jenny, when is she I... coming? Oh, right away. That's why I had... So to... you call her Edith. Hey. Don't you worry, Shreddy. Oh, I thought I heard someone out here. Oh, Lamont, I'm, I'm still not over the shock of last night. I understand. Thanks. I hoped you would. Uh, won't you sit down and we'll talk it over? Uh, that'll be all, Shrevy. That's what you think. Uh, what was that you said? I said, uh, uh, would you like a drink? No, no, not just now. What was it you wanted to tell me, Edith? Please call me, Edith. Mm. All right. You know, I'm still a little upset. I think I was followed here. What? Are you sure? Probably my imagination. But about Jeff's private file. Yes? I know where they are. Now, that is information, Edie. I thought you'd like to know. Is information all you want from me? By no means, Edie. I was hoping you'd say that. And, uh, now, uh, about the files? Lately, Jeff kept his files in a locked briefcase. <laughs> Excuse me, I... I think I got a bit too interested. That's the way I want you to be. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, Jeff couldn't have kept many files in just a briefcase. Only the important ones. You're right, but... Uh, uh, and now... Uh, you were saying? Oh, yes, yes. I, I was saying... Uh, uh, excuse me, I guess I'm a bit upset, too. Because I'm here? Uh... Lamont, you know, you do something to me. I do? <laughs> oh, 
That's very nice of you, but uh, where are Jeff's files now? In a wall safe in his apartment. I have the keys for both. Will that help? Will it? Oh, I should say so, my dear. My dear? I heard someone. Huh? Oh, uh, oh, that little girl lives upstairs. You can hear her all over the place, always yipping about something. Well, Mark, what do we do now? Get Jeff's files. Would you excuse me for a minute? I must talk to Shreddy. I'll meet you in the hall. Before we go, my dear, don't you think that we should, uh... Hmm. Hmm, darling. That was lovely. <laughs> I fooled you that time, didn't I? Well, I'll show you I'm not fooling. <laughs> now you can stay right there till I get back. Come back here, you coward! I gotta go with Edie. You're not I... gonna go with that wolf. Come on, Marco. Oh, oh, stay here. So there was someone here. Why, you crawling eavesdroppers, you sneaky spies. Now I'll tell you what you are. Open your mouth to me and I'll knock that silly hat off your head. Have you ever had a look at that thing? Oh, now listen, girl. You keep out of this. You touch my hat and you know what I'll do to you? No, but I know what I'll do to you. Oh! oh. <laughs> Get out of his arms. Stand up and... Now listen, Mark, act like a lady. Shreddy, take her out. I'll, I'll let her go. Please, please. No, 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 come on. I'll go. Wait downstairs for me. I'll be right with you. No, but I'm oh, going to no. tell her that... Please, please, Edie. Do as I tell you. That's a good girl. Please. Let go of me. She hit me in the jaw. She didn't touch your jaw. Well, she tried to. Quiet. Don't you understand why she was here? She has the keys to Jeff's apartment. Now, do you understand how important it is? Well, you're not going out alone with her. Why, no man's safe with her. Especially you. You stay here with me, Jenny. I'm going to go with the guy what brung me, and that's my boss. I never knew you were like this, Margot. Well, let that be a lesson to you. And another thing. Quiet. I've got something for you. What? You find out. and robbed. The medical examiner says the Merrill girl died of heart failure. Luckily for you, Lamont. Yeah, how come you found her, Cranston? Why, she, uh, she was coming to see me. Why? To bring me some information about Jeff Mann. She was murdered the same as he was. Starting that again after Inspector, what I... Inspector, you'll keep quiet, please. Good thing you said please. That's what he does to me. Why do you insist that it's murder? Because I checked the health records of Jeff and Officer Daniels. So did I. And they were both supposed to be in perfect health. Then how were they killed? Oh, well, the inspector knows. The needle and the bubble and the air and... Cranston, if you start that again, now listen Just to me. Just a second, Inspector. That means he lives a second longer. Guess I'd better go before the inspector gets angry. Before I do what... I'll settle this once and for all. Medical examiner. Oh, Inspector. Five will get you 50 that I'm right. Uh, Cardona speaking. Uh, have a look at those three bodies. And keep in mind, a needle, a bubble, some air, and... Uh, well? Bostick says it's a good idea. He's going to have a look. For what? Needle, bubble, air. Uh, air, needle, bubble. Uh, needle, air, bubble. Needle. Uh, be hard to prove. I've got the solution. What is it? Remember, Commissioner, I'm in charge of this case entirely. Well, how do I look? Well, how do I look? Just like an accident going someplace to happen. Say, don't you think it's dangerous going to this Jeff man's apartment all alone? Oh, Pooh. Lamont dresses up like this all the time and nothing ever happens to him. Yeah, I know, but he's a great... Now, listen, didn't you hear him say that if he didn't have to go down to headquarters tonight, he'd have gone to Jeff Mann's apartment himself and gotten those very important files? Mm -hmm. Well, 
I'm going to get him and finish this case in a hurry. And then get married? Right. Come on. Oh! Hey, you just knocked a lot or nothing. Your face slipped. Oh. Well, give it a boost. Okay, come on. get here before I'm through. Don't worry, boss. I'll give you the horn signal if he shows up. You know, three short ones. That's right. off and ready for anything. Say, you look kind of familiar. Oh, I do, huh? Oh, Rebbe, you little two tiny... Jeff man empty this or did somebody else? We'll have a look. Oh, 
from Jenny. A forget-me-not. And he better not forget-me-not. Neither. Jenny, you must always act like a lady. But you said that... Darling, now that I know someone is impersonating the shadow, I'm sorry for what I did. Forget it, baby. We'll catch that fake shadow and... Then get married. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> You, you forgot your pu 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 trousers. Oh, 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 good heavens. <laughs> uh. 
Hello? Oh, hiya, Joe. Oh, yeah? Well, that's what I heard, too. Yeah, I get you. Well, thanks, Joe. I'm just checking for a friend. <laughs> that's all right. I do as much for you someday. Be seeing you. Another taxi pal, the fourth today. Uh, about Marty Green and May Bishop? Same thing? Yeah. Says May is a bookie. And what a gag. You place your bets through a jukebox. And Marty runs a photo racket at his Paradise Club. Yep. We're all set for them. All the bills in this are marked. Why, well, it was lovely of Lamont to invite us to the Winter Garden tonight. But why does he want us to meet him there? Well, Srevy said something about being busy earlier. Oh? Oh, well, not that I'm suspicious, but after all, it's... Yeah, after all. I know what you mean. Now, don't tell Jenny that you and I are going to the Paradise Club before we meet them. Don't worry, I want to have fun. And when that girl makes a play for you, go for it big, understand? Oh, you know me, boss. Yes, I know you. Well, that's why I'm telling you. <laughs> Gus Bride, this one. Oh, one of the taxi drivers? Yeah. I'm bringing a sucker from the sticks. A guy named Clarence Conco, with a roll as big as your arm. Ooh. Well, I'm ready. A big roll? I'm spending it right now. <laughs> Excuse me, baby. 
Ruby, have uh, you got a correct time? You mean you want to know the time? That's right. I'm expecting my wife. Please. Just a minute, please. He wants to know the correct time. He's expecting his wife. He's got a pocket full of green stuff. Oh, now isn't that sweet? Not leaving so soon, are you? <laughs> as soon as my wife gets here, that's the liquor. <laughs> Trouble is, it isn't. It's what? It's the liquor. Oh. Well, how about some of the owner's private stock? Hmm? Mm hmm? That, that's for me, baby. <laughs> I just love that southern accent. Oh, come on, <laughs> oh, say, this, this is a, oh, this is a lovely Isn't place. Isn't that huh? nice? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, let's sit down and have a Oh, sure, there. I'd like Shall it. Shall we? Uh, salt and pepper. Oh, <laughs> green bread and butter. Isn't oh. that nice? Oh, it's nice. Uh -huh. I like this. <sighs> About that private stuff. Oh, oh, honey, I think you got something in your eyes. Uh huh. Oh, oh which yes, one? you have. Wait a minute. Oh, shut your lungs, there. Mm. 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 <laughs> no, she's like more than one pose. As a matter of fact, she'll take a whole last touch in that. Oh, no, I... Well, uh, my wife can't see that picture. I, well, is it oh, worth anything to you? Oh, oh she died. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, Well, uh, is oh, it worth anything I, to you to keep it uh, from her? Oh. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, anything, I... Oh, about a thousand dollars. There. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. And, uh, can I help you up? Oh, thank you. Now, may I help you down? Oh, yes. Yes, that'd be so well. And, uh, thanks very much, pal. I, uh, I, uh, I like this place. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, pal. Oh, there's Mr. Wilson. Oh, hello, 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 Mr. I didn't get none of that privacy. Oh, well, don't worry, it'll keep. Now take good care of yourself and hurry back, mister. Mm. I'm sure Bye. Will. You! I'm going. Let's go. Sure. Goodbye. Oh, oh, I'll take my hand. You've got lipstick smeared all over your face, and you say you haven't even been near a woman. And the way she wrapped her arms around you, she looked like a like an octopus. Sit down. But I don't think. Sit down. Be quiet while Shrevy gets busy. Okay, Shrevy. Good evening. And what record would you like, please? Give me, uh, number 743, Black. What name, please? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, Joe Begley. Thank you, Mr. Begley. What do you want? Number eight in the third at Caliente tomorrow, five to win. Thank you, Mr. Begley. Works just like Joe Begley said, boss. Yeah? He said there were two entrances to the gymnasium. Yeah, one over there and one back by the corner of the dance floor. Let's try the dance floor entrance. I saw you kiss her, and even if I didn't, you've got enough lipstick. Are you going to talk off. or dance? Well, I can do both. And you, Shreddy, if you ever try to... I'm going to talk or dance. What do you care? You can't do either one. <laughs> Just because women kissed you when you were a baby doesn't mean you can't stop them from doing it now that you're a man. From the looks of that girl you were kissing, all she needs is about three years in a good reform school or a hospital. And I'll put her there. Give me the outfit. Oh. Give me the outfit.
40 sucker bed, two and three horsepower right. I wish I was booking some of these myself. There must be a sure thing, May. I got about two grand bet on the same horse. Thanks, Marie. I'll lay some of this off. Hey, what's the idea, girls? Let's we'll turn off the lights. I did, May. I like the dark. What a place you have here. Is that what just man liked about you, Miss Bishop? Guess you like it, too. That's why you got tired of splitting the blackmail with him and bumped him off. Is that what you think? I know it. You collected last night at the usual place, yourself. How I do get around. You think I'm going to sit by and do That's nothing? That's enough, May. You talk plenty. I tell you, they were blackmailing. I'm getting tired of this routine. Every time I look at you, you're all covered with lipstick. Get the other phone, Shrevy. And don't tell me that every time it's a, it's a case of Cherche La Fendi, because this time you've Cherche one fence, and don't you hit me. You see, he tried to do it again. I saw. That lipstick is evidence of a racket, and that means that that girl will wind up in jail tonight. Well, darling, will she? Why didn't you say so? After all, you know I trust you anywhere. Now, you see, Jenny, it's just like I said it was. Well, why didn't you say so? You know I'd trust you anywhere. All right, listen, we've got to get busy. We're going to finish this case tonight. Are you sure you know what you're doing? It all ties up. Jeff Mann's apartment is proof alone that he had more money than he ever made as a columnist. All right, now, girls, get busy and dial those numbers. Gee, a black neighbor. Nothing more we can do. We might as well go home, and tomorrow I will... Hello? Oh, just a moment. Yeah. Cardona speaking. What? Are you sure? Hello? Just a moment. Yeah, that's right. My degree knows plenty about the Jeff Mann murder. And that's all I'm saying. Mr. Cardona? Well, listen. Because I'm tipping you off to A. Bishop. Another tip on the Jeff Mann case. Hello? Oh, just a moment. Yes, sir. Do you see May Bishop if you want to know why Jeff Mann was killed? Cardona speaking. Good evening, Inspector. The shadow. Of course, Inspector. If you're really anxious to see me, I'll be at the Daily Bulletin in an hour. Commissioner, trace this call. Yes? Will you get off the line, please? Very important. Yes, Inspector. The shadow really gets around. Don't forget. See you in an hour. Pick up May Bishop and Marty Green. Get them to the bulletin right away. One of those two is the shadow. I'll find out which one and finish this case tonight. Sure, I'll tell you why you're here. Because I'm going to solve this crime tonight. What crime? Murder. Now, wait a minute, Inspector. First you said it was murder, then heart failure. Now it's murder again. You trying to ruin this newspaper? Forget your paper. I changed my mind when I found the murderer's mark on the arm of each victim. The mark of a hypodermic needle. The needle was empty, but the murderer had put air bubbles into the bloodstream. And then heart failure. Now, it can't happen unless done deliberately. So it's murder. Now, one of you two is the shadow. Or you know who is. So talk up. You can't pin a murder rap on me. Nor on me. Why should I try to kill Jeff Mann? Because he was blackmailing you. And you too, Marty. Because he was wise to your racket. I don't run a racket. And you better be careful. Oh, excuse me. Oh. oh so you're a copper, huh? No, but the inspector and our pals. What are you doing here? I phoned headquarters and they told me you were here. Pal. Just took it off, Marty. He owes us a thousand bucks, remember? Are you two going to speak up? Or wait until you're in a cell? Before you put me in a cell. Just tell me how I could have killed Jeff Mann. I'll tell you how. You came up the fire escape, killed him, then went down the fire escape to the alley. And... Oh, no, sir. Huh? Why did you say that? Yes, why? Well, we saw the shadow in Jeff's office, but he was gone when we ran in there. Right away? Yes, sir. I looked out the window, but there was no one on the fire escape at all. You could see down to the alley? Sure, but there was no one there. Nobody could have gone down there that fast. Thanks very much, son. You finished work? Yes, sir. Then go on home. Now, come on, you two. Inspector. If either of them killed man, where did they go after leaving the office? The inspector will show us. Sure, I'll show you. I'll show you what? Oh. Cranston and I have something to talk over. Will you excuse us? You know, Lamont, 
I think you've got something there. I tell you. Listen, Cranston. Right now you're healthy and you're not in jail. But you keep butting into my business and you won't be healthy and you will be in jail. As a criminologist, you're filled with so many isms. You've got spasms. And I am getting them. Listening to you talk. You get me so burned up that I feel like the Chicago fire out for a walk. Listen. Will you stand still and listen to me? The boy would have seen the killer if he'd gone down there, wouldn't he? Sure, sure. But you open your mouth again and I... Look. What are we doing out here? You brought me out here, Inspector. To show me how the murderer left Jeff's office and then disappeared. Sure, sure. I know all about that. I got it. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. If he's left any evidence, he'll go to the chair. You may have something there, Inspector. No, oh, there must be something around here. Uh-oh. Look at this. Jeff Mann's briefcase. Now I'm finding the evidence that I need. The old Dodge, Inspector, hiding everything right out in the open. Now I find the shadow outfit and the mask and the hypo. Find anything else, Inspector? Yes. Jeff Mann's sucker list. Now I find the motive for the crime. Get this. Jeff Mann, $5,000. Brad Thomas, $2,500. Oh, then Thomas was just part of the blackmailing record. Yes, but Thomas was getting the short end. So he knocks Jeff off. Cranston, this is probably the best job I've ever done. Let's go. I'll close every racket in town. I'll show them. Recognize your wardrobe, Thomas? And the murder weapon. And the motive for the crime. You and man were partners in the blackmailing. No wonder you praised the shadow in your editorials. Because you, the big shot editor, were him all the time. All right, boys. Take him away. Book them all. Remember, Commissioner, I'm in charge of this case entirely. And with this paper, I'll close every racket in town. And I won't be bothered with the shadow anymore, either. Don't worry, Inspector. You'll be seeing me again. But the shadow? Why, I've got you under arrest. I mean... Thanks for getting my impersonator. What are you doing? You want to get away? Why did you stop me? Wait a minute, you there. Which way to go, Inspector? Let me go. I don't know. I don't know either. The inspector got in my way. Why don't I... Well, let's go. Here's the outfit. Who else is out there? What outfit you're talking about? Margot's Tuso, which is none of your business. Always telling her babe I poking my nose in police affairs. Is Margot your fiance? Oh. She's the one you're going to marry? Huh? No. Then keep your nose out of my affairs. Oh, thanks, Commissioner. The leaders are about to break up crowds. Why don't you break this one up and earn your salary? You've got your killer in your racket ears. Why don't you take him to jail and stay there with him? And remember that. And now for you. All through this case, you've been doing nothing but yakety yakety yak. And now, baby, I'm going to give you what I've been promising you. Oh, are you real?